we're joined here in the Congress Center by Kai Fu Li, certainly a big name in China when it comes to technology innovation, and certainly an advocate of artificial intelligence. Absolutely. <laughs> AI is going to change the world. Okay, that's yeah. a slogan I heard very clearly from you, but Kai Fu, yeah. different governments have their own different AI development plans. China yeah. is yeah. one of them. Yeah. United States as well. Yeah. Secondly, businesses are having a much bigger role coming from even traditional business that do not necessarily have a lot to do with AI. They're doing their own right. version. Right. And also, you see the debates going on. So what would all this mean to the real technology development? Things are getting ever more complicated and messy, shall I say. Well, more resources, more participants, more capital, more talent, that's a good thing. See, you always see the silver lining of everything. <laughs> it's not the silver lining. <laughs> this is the cloud. Okay, there we uh, go. But uh, I think the government plans, I think China has the most forward-thinking techno-utilitarian plan yeah. to push the resources, to try things, and then when they break, fix them. I think the uh, U.S. Europe is more cautious, yes. debating issues related to privacy, security, and even bias. Uh, and I think um, uh, both are valid, but I think China will probably catch up and make more progress because of the utilitarian approach. But do you think there's going to be a lot of strategic competition? Competition... We've already uh, seen it between China and the United States, it seems. I think the competition right now at AI is still within U.S. and within China. So it's Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent <laughs> competing against each other, and it's Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft yeah. competing How against each other. How are the two other. versions different from one another? I think they are uh, similar in that the uh, larger gets larger, because AI is something that enhances monopolies. Yes. Because if you have more data, create a better product, make more money, hire more people. That's another thing people have been talking about. The loop continues yeah. in both countries. And I think uh, what's important both for government and the private sector yeah. is to ensure there is competition. There's new blood. There's venture capitalists like us funding new companies <laughs> that challenge the big ones. There we go. Only when there's competition, only when there are hundreds of AI yeah. companies uh, will consumers have the most choice. That's really what I wanted to focus on right now, which yeah. is, you know, the investment into AI. Yeah. Uh, people talk about the so-called flying pigs uh, in uh, the air, uh. that there is so much money into it. Yeah. There's so much interest. <coughs> people just throwing money into the field. What do you make of that reality? Has that changed? I, I think it's tempting for every entrepreneur to package his her com or her company as mm -hmm. an AI company. Yes. And it's tempting for every VC to want to say, I'm a VC investor, but a, uh, sorry, an AI investor. Yeah. But AI investing is not for the novice. For people who try to get into early stage AI without understanding technology, they will lose their shirt. Okay. And I think there will be many bubbles that will start to bar first towards the end of this year. I see. But there will oh, also be a lot of great... Many bubbles begin to burst. I better catch that word. Yes, What bubbles. kind of bubbles? Well, individual core company bubbles. Yeah. The uh, startups that made up a story that isn't fulfillable and, and fooled VCs into investing because yes. they don't know better. So by the end of the year, we will see men, some, some very successful cases pushing AI forward, but also even more bubbles that burst, companies that run out of money, become right. bankrupt. And that could cause the environment to cool for a while, but AI is here to the long term to stay. So we don't really care about short-term fluctuations. Right. And by the way, how much impact would it have on the env investment environment? Because there are so many people that are focusing on AI these days. So when we talk about bubble burst, <coughs> how much impact it would have on the overall atmosphere? I think it could be substantial yeah. if we look at You're the talking about China or some else? Everywhere in the world. I see. Uh, if we look at the year 2000, right, the dot-com bubble kind of brought down the cable companies, tech companies, yes. even Microsoft, right, uh, was, was brought down uh, the half in, in price. Mr. Gates may not necessarily <coughs> agree with you, but uh, go ahead. Oh, but that was history, right? So this time, I'm very concerned, actually, not just uh, the AI, I think ICOs. ICOs are the biggest bubble. Mm -hmm. That burst will, may cause some AI bubbles to burst. And that may have tri trickle-down effect to even tech companies. So I think individual investors should be cautious mm. because uh, there is going to be a bubble bursting in somewhere between the next 6 to 36 months.
there has been a lot of debate yeah. about the so-called negative side of artificial intelligence. People are talking about what about ethics? Yeah. What about its social impact? What about its taking away the jobs? Right. Am I right? We should be prepared. These are all serious concerns. I think uh, we need to make sure first AI is safe, right? So autonomous, autonomous vehicle can become a weapon, can be taken over by hackers. So we have to protect that. Uh, people's privacy, we need to do the best we can. There is a debate from the, you know, all the way the European view that mm -hmm. everyone should hold his or her own data and then license gradually to the giants. Mm -hmm. And then the more uh, 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 utilitarian view that yeah. uh, China, maybe U.S. is taking. So we'll see how that plays out. I understand the importance of privacy, but people also need to understand we are explicitly asking users to trade privacy for convenience. And there should be some way of opting out, but most of us will opt in. Let me go to some okay. of the points you just made. Okay. Because there could be disagreement a lot about of course. This. Okay. About so called you make the choice to trade your personal freedom with the technology. Privacy, not freedom. Okay. Privacy. Privacy, there we go. All right. A smaller world. Yeah. But you see, the consumers do not have many choices. That's all they have. The, cons you, well, the consumer can choose not to register on WeChat or oh, Facebook. Yeah, but, but everybody else is using it. That is the choice that you have, is to maintain absolute privacy and get no convenience. And give up privacy to some extent, um, and then get a lot of convenience. Also, I think but that's a forced choice rather than a, you know a choice from the bottom of the heart. I, I think you, this is the I think the fundamentally Europe UK belief. Okay. And I admire them for trying to give more options to consumers. Um, let's see what they come up with. Uh, but also be aware that there are other ways to protect privacy. The Chinese government has put in very tough criminal laws for selling of privacy data. Uh, so there are other ways to protect at least the most egregious types of violation. So I think um, uh, let's let each country innovate on how <laughs> it will provide more solutions and see what works and we should all watch and adopt what works. But the, I have to argue on you know, the side of the consumers. There yeah. is an information deficit. I mean, the government maybe knows it. Hmm. The business community maybe know it among yourselves, but yeah. you know, what about consumers like us? We have no way to the data that yeah. you're talking about here. Well, then there I is a deficit. Then I think UK actually leads the world in thinking about ways in which to protect the consumer to the most extreme. But do you think that way would work? I think it can work. You know, you could use blockchain technologies. You could use various types of encryption. Uh, you could have a licensing model. You could have the user choose different technical providers. But what is for sure is, if you take that kind of a deliberate consensus approach to privacy, it will slow down the progress mm. of technology companies in your country. So that is a trade-off a country has to make. Mm. From the very beginning, <coughs> you and I were having this conversation. Yeah. We are talking about the development of AI technologies. Yeah. Remember at that time, everybody was so excited. Yeah. To now, it didn't take long. No. People are becoming very uh, critical, critical and also yeah. skeptical yeah. about the development of AI. Yeah. What do you make of this very, shall I say, quite fast the transition mm. of thoughts? Well, I, saw, I think some What's of going the... On here? Well, some concerns are valid, but uh, we have to plow forward anyway. The biggest concern is AI is taking some of our jobs. Mm. And clearly from assembly line workers, customer service, telemarketing, uh, loan officers. It is taking our uh, jobs. It is. These jobs are gone. The routine jobs will be gone over the next, I think people argue anywhere between the next 10 to 30 years, uh, the routine jobs will be gone. And that's the part that will be hardest tra to transition. Yeah. Because AI to professionals like you and the physician, doctor, banker, uh, can be a tool that can help you make do your job better. Yes. But to a routine job um, holder, uh, that job can be replaced mm -hmm. in the next 10 to 30 years. And that is a huge issue. And I think we uh, cannot slow down the progress of technology. Yeah. We can help uh, people find jobs that are invulnerable to AI. Mm. But 
the speed of change when it comes to education, yeah. social changes, yeah. uh, adjusting to AI and new technologies are just not happening as fast, much slower than the technology development. For sure, that's right. Is there a way that we can do something about it? Or well, we are definitely destined to be a loser here? No, I think mankind will be a winner because we will create so much wealth and value and that wealth and value can be distributed to solve these problems. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, uh, do we have the foresight and the will mm -hmm. to make some changes? What is the answer? Well, we can change education. Mm -hmm. We need to have gifted and talented classes and get those people to come out early and to create huge amounts of value so we have more wealth to distribute and self save the world. We need to change the work ethic. It's okay to work 30 hours a week. That may be hard to convince a lot of people, but ultimately when there's less work to go around, when robots are doing our work, yeah. when we have the wealth, maybe don't work so hard. Can, you co can that convince you? No, but, uh, <laughs> but maybe we need to slowly get people okay. on board. Maybe we need to create more service jobs, mm. jobs of compassion, yeah. right? helping to accompany older people, yeah. uh, have a dialogue and uh, uh, caretaker, helping to wash people who are, you know, disabled right. and as, uh, spend time in the orphanage. All, all of these, options. these are all things that will make us satisfied that we've contributed something to the world. Before we go, Kai Fu, you're a frequenter of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Right. This year, a lot of difficulties because of weather, yeah, but yeah. you're here once again. So yes. what are some of the questions you're trying to ask in your mind when you're coming here? What kind of answer are you seeking at the end of the day? Well, I am hoping that despite uh, a lot of uh, nationalism happening in various countries uh, and some irrational leaders in the Western world starting to emerge, uh, I, I hope in spite of that, that we, the business community, maintains uh, optimistic spirit and uh, long-term belief that globalization is going to be here, to, to, it's going to come back and going to make the world a better place. Kai Fu Lee, always a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you. All the best, have fun. Thank you.